Which tax plan do you believe will be better for you? Donald Trump's or Kamala Harris? Go ahead and drop a comment below right now and let me know what you think. Now, the answer to this question will be different for every single person watching this because each candidate is proposing policies that will benefit specific groups of people at the cost of others. For example, if you're looking to start a new business or purchase your first home, you might like Kamala Harris's plan. Whereas if you already operate a small business, invest, or earn very specific types of income like social security, overtime, and even tips, you might like Trump's plan. Now, as a licensed CPA that tax plans every single day at mycpacoach.com, I have already reviewed these proposals for you and published in depth separate videos on each of these proposals. So make sure you subscribe and check those out if you have not already. But in today's episode, we are going to compare and contrast these plans against each other for almost every group of people like working families, homeowners, investors, small business owners, high income individuals, and so on. So let's jump right in. Okay, so if you have not seen my prior content on this, it is important that you understand that regardless of whose tax plan goes into effect, there will be major tax changes next year. And this is because several tax provisions are set to expire at the end of 2025. So while we don't know which one of these plans will actually pass through Congress, we do know that if nothing happens, your taxes will change. So there is a lot at stake here. For example, 90% of taxpayers take the standard deduction and this could be cut in half after 2025. The current deduction is nearly $15,000 for single taxpayers and almost $30,000 for married taxpayers, which could be cut in half at the end of 2025. But in addition to this, the 20% QBI tax deduction for small businesses would also expire. So if you own a small business that makes 100 grand in income, you would lose a $20,000 tax deduction that exists under current law. Plus, of course, high income individuals will be taxed at higher rates. The maximum rate would go up about 3% to 39.6% after 2025. That's basically an extra $3,000 in taxes on every $100,000 in income. And these are just some of the major tax aspirations. We have others like bonus depreciation, for example, which allowed investors to write off large portions of investment property like equipment, machinery, and even vehicles. Now, with all of these big swings in tax rules and each candidate introducing new proposals on top of all of this, a lot of people wanna know how these changes will affect their specific taxes at the end of the day. And that is what the remainder of this video will help you understand. Now, on a very high level, Kamala Harris wants to raise taxes on the wealthy and introduce very specific tax cuts to create what she calls an opportunity economy, which will essentially give tax cuts for new businesses, first time homeowners, families with newborn children and lower income individuals. She has also stated that no one earning less than $400,000 per year would pay more in taxes, but it is unclear how she would accomplish that with the expiring tax changes we just discussed, such as the QBI deduction or the standard deduction. Now, Donald Trump, on the other hand, originally introduced these tax cuts to begin with. So he is seeking to make most of those provisions permanent plus cutting taxes for a broader range of people and does not limit them to very specific groups like Kamala Harris does, which you'll understand more here in a second. So let's go ahead and dig into how these proposed changes will affect different groups of people like small business owners, retirees, investors, families with children, homeowners, and so on. Now, I think it's important to start with new business owners because over 70 million Americans own some type of business even if it's just a side gig. Now, under current tax law, new business owners are only allowed to write off up to $5,000 of their startup costs that they incur to start their business. And anything above this amount would have to be taken as a deduction in future years. For example, someone with $50,000 in startup expenses would only be able to take about $5,000 as a deduction in the first year, and the remaining 45,000 would be taken over the next several years. However, 
Under Kamala Harris's tax plan, you will be able to write off up to $50,000 of these expenses in the first year, which could result in a big tax deduction for qualifying new businesses. Now, in contrast, under Donald Trump's plan, there does not appear to be any expansion to the current startup tax deduction for new businesses. Therefore, someone looking to start a new business and spend more than $5,000 while doing so would objectively benefit more from Kamala Harris's tax plan. But then there's the question of, well, what about current business owners? While Kamala Harris's tax plan will benefit people looking to start a business, it would do nothing for the 70 million Americans who already own a small business. And just so that you know, many small business owners are not super rich, high income, or wealthy. According to Payscale, the average small business owner earns $73,000 per year in income, and those small business owners would not benefit at all from this tax deduction. Now, on the other hand, under Donald Trump's tax plan, current small business owners would benefit from the 20% QBI tax deduction being extended, granting them a 20% write-off, bonus depreciation, which again allows them to write off up to 100% of assets they buy, like vehicles and equipment, and the work opportunity tax credit. This grants small business owners a tax credit for hiring certain types of people, like people with disabilities, veterans, ex-felons, and other disadvantaged individuals. Now, there does not appear to be any mention of these tax proposals in Kamala Harris's plan, which is big because these tax deductions and credits are currently helping active small business owners right now stay afloat. With that being said, if you currently own a business, then I would say you would probably benefit more from Trump's tax plan. Now, of course, everyone does not own a business and not everyone wants to own one. So let's go ahead and talk about a few other groups of people like workers who earn tip income or work overtime or receive social security income even. So let's start with tip income, which is where both candidates actually seem to agree. So both Donald Trump and Kamala Harris support eliminating tip income from taxes, which will help restaurant and hospitality workers significantly. Now, originally Trump introduced this tax proposal first and Kamala Harris later voiced her support for the same proposal. Now the government already struggles to tax tips anyway, because it's very hard to track cash. So this would actually help them out a little bit as well. Now, another big tax proposal is related to exempting overtime wages from taxes. Now, under Donald Trump's tax plan, overtime wages would not be subject to income tax, which would be huge for the millions of taxpayers who work long hours and earn overtime, such as nurses, construction workers, factory workers, and so on. However, under Kamala Harris's tax plan, there does not appear to be any mention of exempting overtime wages from taxation. Therefore, I think it's safe to say that people who work a lot of overtime would likely pay less taxes under Trump's tax plan. But what about people who don't work, like retirees, for example? Let's talk about Social Security for a second here. So under current law, most people pay into Social Security over the course of their working life, whether it be tax deductions from your W-2 paycheck, or from paying self-employment tax if you own a business. Now, these taxes fund Social Security, which provides income to retirees later in life. However, under current law, up to 50 to 85% of your Social Security income could be taxable to you if your income is above a certain level. For example, up to 50% of your Social Security benefits would be taxable to you if you earn over $25,000 as an individual and if you earn over $34,000 as a single taxpayer, up to 85% of that will be subject to tax. So basically you pay tax to fund the social security program. And then when you receive those benefits later in life, some of that income may be subject to tax again, depending on your income. Now under Trump's tax plan, social security benefits would be exempt from taxes completely, which would largely benefit those retirees 
who rely on this type of income. In contrast, under Kamala Harris's tax plan, there does not appear to be any plan to change how this will be taxed. But she does have plans to do other things, like creating an incentive for first time home buyers that would be attractive for many people looking to purchase their first home. She is proposing to provide up to $25,000 as a tax credit for first time home buyers. Now, the details on this do appear to be pretty vague right now, but from what I understand, if you have not owned a home in the last three years, you may qualify for this tax credit under this tax plan. On her website, it states that this plan would apply, quote, more generous support for first generation homeowners, which implies that migrants would qualify for more support than others under this proposal. And based on the limited details I can see, I assume that first generation home buyers would qualify for up to $25,000 as a tax credit, while others may qualify for up to $10,000 in support. Now, in contrast, Donald Trump does not have any plans that are specifically tailored to down payment assistance for first time home buyers. Instead, Trump's tax proposal has primarily benefited real estate investors. For example, they can currently take the 20% QBI deduction, they can take bonus depreciation to write off up to 100% of certain types of property, as well as preserving the like kind exchange, which essentially allows investors to swap one property for another without paying taxes. But again, remember some of these provisions are set to expire and under Trump's new plan, they will be extended. So while Kamala Harris's plan will primarily benefit first time home buyers, Trump's tax plan will benefit current real estate investors or those who are looking to get into real estate such as buying an investment property. Okay, so outside of buying a home, there are even more tax proposals that apply to people inside your home, like your children, for example. So under current law, the child tax credit is $2,000 per child for qualifying taxpayers. And under Kamala Harris's plan, this would increase significantly. She would increase this credit to $6,000 per child under one years of age, $3,600 per child under the age of six and three thousand dollars per child for older children now in contrast trump also wants to increase the child tax credit to a flat five thousand dollars per child irregardless of age according to recent reports and when compared to kamala harris's proposal on this in many cases, people with children over the age of one would actually have a larger tax credit under Donald Trump's plan. However, that may not be the case for a limited group of people who also qualify for the earned income tax credit, which provides a tax credit to people who earn less than $60,000 per year in income. So under current law, this tax credit ranges from $600 to about $8,000 depending on your income and the amount of children you have. And Harris reportedly wants to increase this credit for qualifying individuals with no children from about $600 to $1,500. And it is also possible that she would increase the credit for people with children as well, but we will have to see more details for that. Whereas in contrast, there does not appear to be a proposal from Trump in regards to the earned income tax credit. With that said, let's go ahead and switch gears and talk about each candidate's proposals related to investments. Now, there has been a lot of talk around new capital gains taxes, which could affect almost every American with assets such as your car, your house, your stock portfolio, your business, and other types of property. Now, if you don't know, a capital gain is when you sell an asset for more than what you paid for. The difference or gain is usually what you pay tax on. And under current tax law, long-term capital gains are subject to taxes ranging from zero to 20% depending on your income. Now, under Kamala Harris's tax plan, the maximum tax rate would increase to 28% 
for taxpayers earning more than $1 million per year in income. For context, that's an additional $80,000 in taxes for someone with a $1 million gain. Now, of course, this would impact high income earners, but also keep in mind that not everyone with a large capital gain is earning a lot of income. Someone selling their small business, for example, that they work their entire life to build, to retire one day, could end up paying this tax when they sell their business despite never earning high income. Similar situations may apply for taxpayers with real estate holdings that they've held for a long time or other assets. Now, in contrast, Donald Trump does not appear to have any plans to increase the long-term capital gains tax. Instead, there has been talk of his support for lowering the long-term capital gains rate to 15% instead of 20% to encourage more investment. Therefore, someone who wants to pay less capital gains tax would pay less of that under Trump's tax plan. But in addition to that, there is a completely new tax proposal that Kamala Harris has suggested, such as the unrealized capital gains tax. Now, an unrealized capital gain is when you own an asset that has appreciated in value, but have not sold. Now, under current law, there is no tax on this type of situation. However, Kamala Harris has proposed assessing this tax on individuals with more than $100 million in net wealth. Specifically, the proposal would require these individuals to pay an effective minimum tax of 25% on all of their unrealized capital gains in their portfolio and income. Now, the reason for this tax is primarily due to the fact that people with a lot of assets are able to avoid capital gains tax completely by never selling their assets. Instead, they just borrow money against their portfolios and never pay tax as a result. And because these people typically have very large portfolios, they can essentially do this forever without ever paying taxes. So this proposal addresses that and would raise more revenue for the government at the end of the day. However, introducing this new type of tax raises the question of how it will change over time. We've seen the maximum tax rate in the US go as low as 7% and as high as 94% depending on who is in office. So while this proposal is originally intended for the ultra wealthy, it is possible that it could change over time. Okay, so I'm curious, would you personally be okay with paying a tax on your unrealized capital gains? Let me know in the comments below. Now, under Trump, there are no such proposals for unrealized capital gains taxes. So obviously, if you're in that scenario, you would pay less tax under Trump. However, Trump is proposing a completely different type of tax as well, which some people also believe is pretty extreme. He wants to implement universal tariffs, which would create a 10 to 20% tax on imports from other countries and could even be as high as 60% on imports from China. Now, if you don't know what a tariff is, it is basically a tax that applies to goods purchased from other countries. And Trump basically wants to encourage people to buy American products and build American products or those products in the US basically. And by implementing this universal tariff on imported goods, it would likely discourage people from buying and building products outside of the country. Now, skeptics of this plan argue that it would raise inflation and cause a wide range of other issues as well. But ultimately, with all of the tax cuts that Trump is proposing here, he has to find ways to pay for them. And this appears to be his campaign's way of doing that. Whereas in contrast, Kamala Harris is proposing to tax corporations and high income individuals more which leads us to the next point here, actually. So let's talk about corporate and individual income tax rate changes. So under current law, the corporate tax rate is a flat 21% tax. And Trump actually wants to decrease this tax to 15% for corporations who produce their products in the US, common theme there, whereas other corporations taxes would be reduced to 20%. Now, on the other hand, Kamala Harris wants to increase the corporate tax rate to 28%, 
which means that our corporations would have higher taxes as a result of Kamala Harris's tax plan, which again raises tax revenue and affords her the ability to offer the other tax cuts we mentioned earlier. Now, the bottom line is that corporations would obviously pay less taxes under Trump, where his goal is to cut additional spending, cut taxes, and raise taxes from imports. But we also have to address the individual tax rates, which are changing as well. Currently, the maximum individual rate federally is 37%. But remember, this expires at the end of 2025. Now, under Trump's plan, he will seek to extend the 37% tax rate or make it permanent, whereas Harris will likely allow the tax to increase back to 39.6%. Therefore, high income individuals can expect their taxes to increase as a result under Harris's tax plan, whereas they would pay less taxes under Trump. Now, with all of that being said, the major question is whose tax plan is better for you specifically when you file your next tax return will you have more money in your pockets or less for people with very specific use cases like individuals with newborn children people looking to purchase their first home or do not pay a high amount of taxes already, you may decide that Kamala Harris's tax plan is for you. But for people with existing small businesses who already own homes, have investments, or earn income that does not qualify for Kamala Harris's tax credits, they may feel better served under Trump's tax plan. Now, of course, there is far more to consider with each proposal here, like its impact on the economy, the deficit, and a lot more political jargon that I care to get into on this channel. But what I can say is that as a licensed CPA that works with taxpayers every day, I have never had a client tell me that they wanted to pay more money in taxes. My clients literally hire me to understand these rules, to help them pay less taxes, so hopefully this video helps you understand where opportunities may lie for you. But if you need a comprehensive tax plan to reduce your next tax bill, just go over to mycpacoach.com today to apply to work with one of my CPAs.